of the water and of the spirit. Amen. And birth of the water, of course, is water baptism. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name. And the birth of the spirit is being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Amen. Which is born of the Holy Ghost is spirit. Amen. And that which is born of the flesh is flesh. So Jesus is making, amen, a distinction. There's a difference between flesh and spirit. Amen. And he said, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell. You know, he's telling you the wind blows where it goes, and you can hear the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it come or where it's coming from, and where they go or where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Amen. You can hear the sound of someone speaking in other tongues as the spirit that he utterance. Amen. But you can't tell when it's going to come or when it's going to go. Amen. But you can hear the sound. Praise God. It's not someone, amen, in the back room telling you to, amen, repeat after me some mumbo jumbo. No, that ain't the Holy Ghost. If a man has to teach it to you, amen, you don't got it. You don't have it. Amen. So now let's go into Acts chapter 2. Amen. This is what, amen, one must do in order to be saved, amen, or enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. It's not about joining church and signing your name on the membership roll. Amen. Nowhere in the Bible now. Amen. Of course, it's in your, amen, Baptist bylaw or somewhere, but it's nowhere in the Holy Scriptures. <clears throat> so Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. There we go. Amen. The birth of the Spirit. Verse 4. And began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. That's the evidence of receiving the Holy Ghost when you speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Amen. As the Holy Ghost do the talking through your vessel. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, not are not all these which speak Galileans? <clears throat> and how hear we every man in our own tongue where we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Now, verse 12, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what mean of this? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. But Peter, amen, Apostle Peter, so this was after the, amen, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, amen. The Lord God went back to heaven where he came from. Amen. And now he can pull back his spirit. Amen. Upon the church. Amen. On the day of Pentecost. Amen. He told them to wait in Jerusalem and tarry till you be endued with power from on high. So now they have just been endued with that power from on high. Amen. In Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. In verse 14, but Peter standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Amen. So Peter letting them know, no, they're not drunk, amen, as you thinking, amen. It's only the third hour of the day, nine o'clock, amen. People don't typically get drunk at nine o'clock in the morning. They usually wait. Amen. Till the nighttime. 
Amen. Because the Bible says that them that sleep be sleeping the night and they that be drunk are drunken in the night. Amen. Not in the early morning. Amen. <clears throat> but he says, verse 16, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. <clears throat> And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and all my servants and all my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God have raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Amen. Because Jesus didn't commit any sin, neither was there any God found in his mouth. So Jesus, he didn't deserve to die. Amen. But he died for you and I. Amen. For your sins and for my sins. Amen. That they might be forgiven. Amen. And washed away. Amen. But David speak of concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life thou shalt make me full of joy with thy confidence then Peter goes on to say men and brethren let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried and his sepulchre is with us unto this day therefore being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh he will raise up Christ to sit on his throne he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul, so now we know, amen, where the soul of Jesus went, amen, his soul went to hell, amen, because he died as a sinner, amen. He took upon himself the sins of the whole world, amen, and that's where sinners go when they die. They go to hell, amen. Anyone died in their sins, amen, never repented, amen, never was baptized in Jesus' name, never received the Holy Ghost, Amen. They didn't die living holy. They went to hell. Amen. It be your kin folk, your blood kin. Don't matter. Don't matter if the false prophet even gets up and, and say they ain't the bosom of Abraham. Amen. He, he on his way to hell too for lying. Amen. But Jesus' soul was in hell. Amen. His soul was not left there and neither did his flesh or his body see corruption. Amen. This Jesus have God raised up whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he have shed forth this which he now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he say of himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God have made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. In verse 37, now when they heard this, amen, they heard Peter preach, amen, the gospel of Jesus Christ on the day of Pentecost, amen, they, they wasn't saying, oh, well, that ain't what my relatives say, that ain't what I grew up in church hearing, you know, no. Say they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Amen. They didn't say, well, men and brethren, they don't take all that. Amen. Rail told me to do the best I can because God know I can't help it. 
No. Amen. It says, what shall we do? Verse 37, Acts chapter 2. Then Peter said unto them, verse 38, repent. Amen. So you have to turn from the practice of your wicked ways. Amen. You have to stop sinning. And it's a choice. Amen. You have to voluntarily choose to repent of your sins. Amen. I have to repent of my sins. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'm glad I did. Yes. Amen. Yes. I have to give up the, the lying and the stealing and the cheating. Amen. Fornicating, having sex outside of marriage. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. It doesn't matter how long y'all been together. Amen. How many kids y'all have. Amen. You, you never got married. Amen. Y'all in fornication. Amen. The Bible says, amen, no fornicator will inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. False prophets tell you it's all good, but hallelujah, true man of God tell you you're on your way to hell if you don't repent. Amen. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you. So repentance, that's the type of death. Amen. Jesus died, so we have to likewise die. Amen. And that's through repentance, turning away from sin. And be baptized. Jesus was buried. We have to likewise be buried with him through water baptism. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So not the so-called name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Because Father is not a name. Son is not a name. The Holy Ghost is not a name. Amen. Those are only titles. Amen. But Jesus is the name of the Father. Amen. John chapter 5, verse 43. Jesus said, I am come in my father's name, and ye receive me not. Then he said, if another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. We know that the name of the son is Jesus. But Matthew 1, 21, it said, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus, John 14, 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So Apostle Peter being full of the Holy Ghost, by the way, amen. False prophet don't have the Holy Ghost because he ain't preaching this. Amen. Peter telling you, you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. So that's the only way your sins are going to be remitted. Amen. Or washed away or forgiven. Is through water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Then he says that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So then you shall receive the birth of the Spirit. Amen. Or the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because once you get sin out your life, then the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be ready to give you, amen, the gift of his Spirit. Amen. And you're going to speak in tongues just like we did. Amen. Just like every other true saint of God has. Amen. And it won't be no one, amen, whispering in your ear, amen. No one will have to coach you or tell you to repeat after them some mumbo-jumbo, amen. Praise God, the Lord himself will speak. Then he says, verse 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children. So it's a promise. And we know God makes promises. He keeps his promises. God is not a liar. Amen. He's not a man that he should lie, neither son of man that he should repent. Yes. Amen. So when God makes a promise in his word, he keeps it. Amen. I'm sorry. Praise God. Where are we now? I have to step off a little bit. Acts chapter 39. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. Thank you. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. So it's a promise, amen, that the Lord has made. Praise God. And God keeps his promises. He doesn't break. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And then verse 40 says, And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. So, amen. You have to save yourself. Amen. From this untoward generation. Amen. You can't save your mama. You can't save your daddy. Amen. But you can save yourself. Amen. Praise God. Because you can't make them do right. Amen. But hallelujah. With the help of the Lord. Amen. You can cause yourself to do right if you want to be saved. Amen. And so praise the Lord. We will stop there. Amen. So what must you do to be saved? Amen. You have to believe. Amen. In the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you have to obey.